Famous Quick Relief from Acid Indigestion presents A Date with Judy. Hello? Judy, could I have a date for Saturday night? Well, you certainly could. <laughs> I'm a little short on gas, so I wonder if you'd mind meeting me at Peterson's Drugstore. We'll have a soda, and then we can go someplace. Uh, wonderful. Okay. I'll meet you in front of the drugstore at about 7.30. Uh, don't be late. Goodbye. Goodbye. Who is that, Judy? Jeepers, I forgot to ask. <laughs> Well, that's Judy, folks. Judy Foster, the cutest date in town. And your date with her each Tuesday at the same time is arranged by the makers of Tums, famous quick relief for acid indigestion. Well, now we pick up Judy and her 12-year-old brother, Randolph, in a department store where they're trying to find a present for their parents' anniversary. Randolph, how do you think Mother and Father would like a ping-pong table? I don't know how they'd like it, but I'd like it. (laughs) This isn't your anniversary, Randolph. Um, how do you think they'd like a set of books? They have a set of books. Oh, Randolph, I know just the thing. Oh, Randolph, this is something to be terrific. We'll buy Mother and Father some Frank Sinatra records. Oh, that'll be just dandy. (laughs) Then for your birthday, Father can give you a box of cigars and a nice smoking jacket. I think it was terribly mean of you not to let me buy Father and Mother the Sinatra records. Yeah, and after us spending a whole hour listening to them, too. It was a lovely morning, wasn't it, Randall? Yeah, but we still haven't got an anniversary present. Well, maybe this next door will have something we... Hey, look, Randall. What? Look what's playing at the Bijou this week. Two big feature attractions, one newsreel, one short, one Mickey Mouse, one serial, and a stage show. Well, that's a nice way to spend a week. Randall, I finally figured out a solution to all our problems Instead of buying father and mother a present, let's take them to the show You know, have a theater party Okay, we'll invite all our friends and Randolph, we... remember, we have only three dollars to spend on their anniversary How much are the tickets? Fifty-five cents, as usual Well, then we could buy, let me see now, fifty-five and the three dollars goes Oh, we could buy five tickets and we still have twenty-five cents left over Enough for five people and a midget Oh, Randolph, look what the features are. Hep, Cat, Katie, and Jumping Jive. You know, Randolph, I know who'd really enjoy this bill the most. Judy, we are not going to invite any of your friends. This party is for mother and father. Well, you can't deny it. Oogie Pringle and his hot licks would love this bill. Oh, I don't know. Look at that cereal. The mystery cowboy rides again. Some of my gang would be crazy about it. You can get them in at 15 cents a throw. So much the worst. Randolph, in this occasion, I think it's up to both of us to act purely unselfishly and only think of mother and father. She spends the whole morning quivering over Frank Sinatra and suddenly she gets unselfish. Come on, Randolph. Let's go home and tell mother. Boy, wait till she sits through Hepcat Katie and Jumping Jive tonight. She'll be sorry she ever got married. Melvin. Why, Dora, what are you doing downtown at this time of the day? Well, I was on my way to the Red Cross, and I thought I'd drop by the office for a moment. Well, good. Uh, sit down, dear. Hey. Melvin, I just wanted to tell you that I think we have the sweetest children in the whole world. Huh? Guess what they've done. I can't possibly. <laughs> they've arranged a theater party in our honor. They have? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, what's the occasion, dear? Oh, Melvin... What's the date today? Uh, February 22nd. Well, doesn't that mean anything to you? I see. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, then you did remember. It's Washington's birthday. <laughs> why, Melvin Foster, I don't know why I ever married you. Well, uh, oh, 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 it's our anniversary. Yeah. Oh, I'll bet you actually thought I'd forgotten it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Now, Melvin, don't try and pretend. Well, I did not forget it, Dora. You'll see when I get home. Mm. Oh, Dora, I just remembered I can't go to the theater tonight. Well, why not, I'm expecting Mr. Gibbons here any minute. I've simply got to get that tomato canning contract from him, and I'm going to have to do some fast talking. 
He's on the verge of signing with the deluxe people. Oh, Melvin. Well, the children will be brokenhearted. They picked a show they think we especially want to see. Well, it is sweet of them, but I don't know what I can do. It's such an important contract, I'd hate to lose it. Say, Melvin, I have an idea. How would it be if we asked Mr. Gibbons to go along with us? Well, I don't know, Dora. After Mr. Gibbons spends an evening with your delightful family, I'll bet you'll get your contract. Well, I'll ask him when he comes in. I'd hate to let the kids down. No, I know you would, dear. And Melvin. Yes, Dora? I think I have the sweetest husband in the world, too. Oh. Oh, you do, do you? (laughs) Yes, I do. Well, goodbye, dear. I'll see you this evening. Goodbye, Dora. Yes, Mr. Foster. Uh, Miss Watson, get the royal florist shop on the phone and have them fix up an extra special bunch of flowers for me. I'll pick them up on my way home. It's our anniversary. And you know I never forget anniversaries. Oh, Father. Oh, Judy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had someone in your office. Oh, that's all right. Come right in, kids. Uh, Mr. Gibbons, this is my daughter, Judy, and my son, Randolph. Well, how do you do? Hello, Mr. Gibbons. I've met your daughter before, Foster. I think she's a friend of my son, Willie. Oh, yes, of course. Willie and I are very good friends. In fact, she was that way about him from September 1st to September 3rd of last year. <laughs> that way? You know, she was making him her hobby. Oh. Uh, 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 <laughs> children, uh, I think you'd better be running along now. Uh, Mr. Gibbons and I have some business to discuss. But, Father, we haven't told you what we came for yet. On account of this being your anniversary. And Mother's, too, naturally. <laughs> yes, your mother's told me all about it. And I think it's very thoughtful of you kids to give a theater party in our honor. And you know what? I've asked Mr. Gibbons here to join us. Uh, Foster, I told you I don't think I can make it. You see, I want to make up my mind about that contract tonight. Oh, Mr. Gibbons, you've got to come. If you don't, Father won't. And if he doesn't come, it'll spoil Mother's evening. Of course, we could fix Mother up with Oogie Pringle. No. No, I don't think it's fair that Mother has to have a blind date in her anniversary. She really ought to be with Father. Uh, Are they serious? Would they really fix your wife up with a, uh, a blind date for Oh, no, no, they're just kidding, just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> hey, you know children. Mr. Gibbons, you simply can't let Mother down like this. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't think I ought to oh, take Oh, the... come on, Gibbons. A little relaxation would be good for you. Well... Please, Mr. Gibbons. We can afford you, you know. It isn't as though you'd have to buy your own ticket. Uh, well, all right. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, well it's all settled then. Fine. And now, now, run along, kids. Uh, goodbye. Bye, Father. Goodbye, Mr. Gibbons. Bye, Father. Goodbye. <sighs> this younger generation. Oh, I don't know. I think they're all pretty swell kids. Well, I wish I thought so. This jazz craze of theirs. I believe it's called Jeeve. Hmm? No, no, Jive. Jive, oh. Jive. Now, whatever it's called, I hate it. In my day, music was music. Now, take Victor Herbert. There was a man who knew how to write music, had a melody. But this modern stuff... Uh, now, about this little deal about... Bobby it. socks uh, and sloppy Joe sweaters. I don't know how the boys of this generation stand the girls of this generation, Foster. Well, now, Judy's a sweet Every girl. time my son Willie brings one of them home, I just gape in wonder. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, no matter what the deluxe people claim, I still know I can give you an all-around... Hey, and that Frank Sinatra. You... Can you understand anything like that, Foster? <laughs> well, I don't know now. Judy's crazy about him. All the kids are. Now, believe me, my Willie isn't interested in this mooner-cooner stuff. Tomatoes, that's a thing. He's going to follow right in my footsteps. In tomatoes? In tomatoes. Well, before we hear more about the surprise the kids have planned, uh, I want to give you a word of advice. Now, you may suffer a sudden spell of acid indigestion at any time. And when this happens to you, be wise. Take Tums right away. For Tums are compounded to deal promptly with indigestion due to excess gastric acidity. Almost before you know it, Tums relieve the acid pain, the heartburn, and that miserable full feeling. And Tums are ready to take the very instant you need them. There's nothing to mix or stir, no fuss or bother at all. You don't even need water. Just slip one or two Tums in your mouth as you would candy mints. And know what it is to get quick relief from that upset acid stomach. Ask your druggist right away for Tums for the Tummy. Only ten cents a roll. And now, back to A Date with Judy.
where Judy and Randolph are having a theater party in honor of their parents' anniversary. Father's very anxious to get an important canning contract from a certain Mr. Gibbons, and he's invited him to the theater party, too. Now we pick up Judy and Randolph on the way home from town. Randolph, look who's coming down the street. Well, bless my soul, if it isn't your bosom friend and arch enemy, Mitzi. She's neither. I'm completely indifferent to her. You two used to be what we of the upper classes call inseparable. We used to. But she certainly turned out to be an awful mothball. Oh, is that so? I can't stand her anymore. She's a pot. Well, hello, Judy. Why, hello, Mitzi, darling. It's simply marvelous bumping into you. I haven't seen you for utterly ages. Well, I saw you the other night at Barney's Beanery. You did? I must have been with Spencer Havenhurst. No, you were with Oogie Pringle. I was. I always forget who I'm with. She just has so many dates, she gets them all mixed up. I was with Willie Gibbons. You were? I didn't notice. How is Willie these days? Oh, he's just adorable. Have you heard his voice lately? Just when he calls me up and asks me for dates. Of course, it happens. I'm generally busy. As a matter of fact, I haven't been able to give Willie a date in utterly months. Judy, it might interest you to know that Willie has been going steady with Mitzi for utterly months. <laughs> oh, really? Well, for gonna... <laughs> well, that's funny. I thought it was Willie calling me for dates. I guess I must have got him mixed up with somebody else. So many people ask her for dates, Mitzi. Well, anyhow, I wasn't talking about his speaking voice. I was talking about his crooning voice. Oh, does he croon, too? So many people do. <laughs> oh, but he swooner croons. He does? Oh, yes. He and Frank Sinatra have got the whole swooner crooner field tied up between them. Oh, he's utterly terrific. He developed a vibration. A vibration? Has he really, Mitzi? Oh, yes. Believe me, Judy, if he had Frank Sinatra's publicity agent, well, he'd be a... Well, a... A Frank Sinatra? Yes, absolutely. Well, why don't we all get behind him and see that he gets the right kind of publicity? Gee, I wish somebody do something for him. Especially now that he's getting his big opportunity. His big opportunity? Oh, haven't you heard? No. Why, well, he's going to sing at the Bijou tonight. He is? Tonight? Why, well, what a coincidence. Yes, tonight's amateur night. Really? Mm-hmm. He passed the audition with flying colors. Now, if only somebody in the audience would swoon tonight, his career would be in the bag. You know, Mitzi, that is a terrific idea. What is? Somebody in the audience swooning tonight. Judy, that's utterly terrific. Mitzi, I'll be glad to do it for you. You will? Oh, Judy, how darling of you. Oh, think nothing of it. She swoons at the drop of a hat. <laughs> I'll definitely be glad to do it for you, Mitzi. I'll never forget what bosom friends we used to be. Why, the least I could do is swoon for an old bosom friend like you. Well, it's really very sweet of you, Judy, but I was just wondering. As Willie's steady girlfriend, don't you think I'm the one who ought to swoon? I mean, it would seem kind of disloyal to let somebody else do it. Well, why don't you both swoon? Two swoons are better than one, I always say. Well, that's right. Why don't we, Mitzi? In fact, you could call up a whole bunch of people and everybody could swoon. Yes, we could. Oh, that'd get him all kinds of publicity, wouldn't it? It certainly would. I can just see the papers. Last night when the show at the Bijou was over, 40 bodies were lying on the floor. <laughs> I'll call up all my friends. And I'll call up all mine. So many bodies cluttered up the floor that they had to be swept out with a fire hose. <laughs> oh, Judy, I think you're the most marvelous friend I ever had. I've always been terribly fond of you, too, Mitzi. <laughs> Willie, we came over to tell you that we're going to give you the complete Frank Sinatra build-up. Your career as a swooner crooner will be in the bag. Oh, that'll sure be a relief. And I won't have to can tomatoes with my father when I get through college. Are you in any immediate danger? You haven't even entered college yet. Well, maybe father will stop training me for business. All he does is just drag me around to board of directors' meetings and make me keep his books. Which an accountant has to do all over again. Oh, wait until my father sees how much money I can make as a swooner crooner. You can let your father keep your books. Well, Judy and I better get busy and, and tell everybody to go to the Bijou tonight and swoon. Will you sure will go over like a house of fire tonight? They'll have to call out the engines. Oh, yes, we're going to need all the fire hose we can get. <laughs> Say, do you suppose I can get Mother to swoon for us? Oh, I bet she'll be glad to. Well, I'll ask her. Well, we seem to have everything under control. You know, there's only one little item we haven't taken care of. What's that, Randolph? We haven't got anybody to squeal tonight. Squeal? Well, sure. What happens when Frank Sinatra vibrates? He's right. The girls all squeal. We need squealers just as much as we need swooners. Well, I'll tell you what we could do. 
We could ask everybody to squeal first, before they swoon. Yes, we'll tell them not to swoon till the end of the song. I can just hear it now. Squeal, 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 and then suddenly a general kerplunk. <laughs> Girls, please, please be quiet. Quiet! Now, girls, this is Willie's big chance. We've all gathered here at my house to do one thing, practice squealing. Now, all together. One, two, three, squeal. Yipes, that's awful. Girls, if you want Willie to give Sinatra any competition, you'll have to do better than that. Judy, maybe we ought to let Willie sing a few bars so the girls can get in the mood. Oh, that's right, Mitzi. What are you going to sing, Willie? I'm going to sing Paper Doll. Do you want an accompaniment? Well, naturally, of course. I'll accompany Willie. <laughs> oh, what key do you want? <laughs> the key of C. Oh, that's lucky. That's the only one I know. Girls, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Willie. All right. I'm gonna buy a paper doll that I can call my own A doll that other fellows cannot steal Wait a minute, Willie uh, Huh? Girls, put more oomph into it hey, Would it help if I played a Sinatra record? Now, don't be silly, Randolph Willie is just as good as Frankie, nearly Try it again, Willie Sinatra's got a mic Gee, I, I haven't got anything to hover over here, Willie, drape yourself around this lamp here. Okay. I'm gonna buy a paper doll that I can call my own. Oh, see, that's much better. I hadn't noticed. Be <laughs> quiet, Randolph. Go ahead, Willie. A doll that other fellows cannot steal. And then those flirty. flirty Sinatra guys gets much louder squeals than that. Again. Eyes. Again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Judy. They're just not giving me anything. Girls, he's absolutely right. You aren't giving it all you've got. Judy, how about me getting out my white mice? I think that would do the trick. Don't you? <laughs> Come on, Willie. Try it again. Well, all right. I'm gonna buy a paper doll. Well, that's better. Again. <laughs> We'll rejoin the Fosters and Mr. Gibbons at the theater in just a moment. Uh, but first, ladies and gentlemen, when you want relief from acid indigestion, you want it fast. So here's what to do. Slip one or two Tums in your mouth immediately. Now, Tums don't fool around. Tums promptly relieve indigestion due to excess gastric acidity. Yes, they really help a sour, jittery stomach feel sweet and comfortable again in a jiffy. They ease the acid pain. They soothe the heartburn. They put down that uncomfortable, full feeling, all in record time. And yet Tums contain no baking soda, no bicarbonate of soda. They relieve acid indigestion in a different way entirely, an up-to-date, scientific way that doesn't upset the system or leave distressing after-effects. And you'll find Tums so easy and pleasant to take, just slip them in your mouth as you would candy mints. Nothing to mix, nothing to stir, you don't even need water. So don't ever let an upset acid stomach cause you unnecessary distress when you can get such quick relief with Tums. Ask your druggist tonight, or first thing tomorrow morning, for Tums for the Tummy, only ten cents a roll. And now, back to A Date with Judy. Well, Judy's crowd is going to give Willie Gibbons the Frank Sinatra build-up tonight at the Bijou, where he's going to appear on the stage show as an amateur. Now, Willie's father, of course, has no idea what the kids are up to. He's a member of the theater party Judy is giving for her parents' anniversary, and he's in for a surprise. We find Mr. Foster talking to his wife on the telephone. Oh, say, Dora, I'm terribly sorry, but Gibbons wants me to have dinner with him. So we'll have to meet you at the Bijou later, huh? I understand, dear. Now, don't keep us waiting. Oh, no, no, we'll be on time, all right. And, uh, Dora, mm -hmm. uh, be sure to ask the children to be particularly nice to Mr. Gibbons. I will, dear. But don't worry about them, Melvin. They've really planned a grand evening for us. And, and, and please tell Judy not to wear bobby socks. Mr. Gibbons can't stand them. Will you stop worrying? I'll see to it that Judy looks her best. Uh -huh. oh, oh, and Melvin, I forgot to tell you. Uh -huh. The children said they have a lovely surprise for Mr. Gibbons tonight. <laughs> When 
Mr. Gibbons sees what a big hit Willie's going to be tonight, he'll be in a marvelous mood. Who, Willie? No, his father, naturally. Well, how many girls you got now who promised to swoon? Twenty-six. That's a goodly amount. I'm simply furious at Tootsie Whiteman. Oh, what's the matter with Tootsie? She refuses to cooperate. She simply won't swoon for Willie. She says she's faithful to Frank Sinatra and she won't swoon for anybody else. The dirty dog. (laughs) Randolph, I was just thinking. Do you think I ought to call up the newspaper and tell him to be sure and have a reporter there tonight? That might be a safe procedure. I hate to see 26 girls swooning for nothing. Well, here we are, everyone. Good. What's the picture we're going to see? Oh, there are two of them, Mr. Gibbons. Hep Cat Katie and Jumping Jive. Oh, huh? no. Judy, I wish you'd told me before we invited Mr. Gibbons. Oh, now, Melvin, don't spoil their party. Their party? Is it their anniversary? Eh, Foster, I don't want to be a poor sport. I'll go, but couldn't we leave after the first picture? Oh, no, Mr. Gibbons. That'd spoil the whole thing. Uh, Look, I'll tell you what, Gibbons. Uh, Let's miss both pictures. Uh, You and I can sit out here in the lobby and have a cigar until the stage show starts. Hey, that's all right. That's a good idea. Hey, I'll send Randolph out to get you. Randolph? What on earth have you got in that package? Oh, nothing, Mother. Just some stuff. Well, I wish you wouldn't bring stuff with you to a theater. Well, come on, everyone. We're going to be late. Oh, this is the darndest, most uncomfortable chair I ever sat in. You'd certainly think a picture house could put better chairs in their lobbies. And speaking of quality, Gibbons, those deluxe people haven't anything that compares with the quality of... Oh, here's Randolph. I guess the pictures must be over. Oh, Father, you got back just in time. I was so afraid you and Mr. Gibbons would miss the stage show. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for anything. Uh, uh, Judy, are you sure that your surprise for Mr. Gibbons is a pleasant one? Oh, my. Yes. Well, hello, soaps. I mean, folks. Ha, 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 ha. Hello, hello, hello. Now for our big amateur show. That's all I need, amateur show. Ladies and gentlemen, I call you gentlemen, though I don't know you. Ha, <laughs> We have collected some excellent talent right here in our own little big city. Yes, sir. To open our contest tonight, we present a talented young man from the West Side, Mr. Doodles Finberg. Mr. Finberg does bird calls, whistles, and imitations. Oh, no. (laughs) His first imitation will be that of a mockingbird. Do, Foster, get me out of here. Well, you can't leave now. Well, how'd you like that, folks, huh? And now... Now we have a young man who's going to sing for us. Yes, sir, he's going to sing. I want you to meet little Willie Gibbon. Huh? Come on right out here, Willie boy. It's it's my Willie. And what are you going to sing, Willie boy? I'm going to sing... The music... The music stops. Good Lord, Foster. The music stops. Yes, sir, the music stops. All right, boys, let's start it. Take it away. Isn't it wonderful, Father? Isn't it marvelous, Mr. Gibbons? Oh, marvelous. That's the surprise we have for you. I'll murder him. Ready, Mitzi? Yes, are you ready, Judy? Okay. Mother, I've got a nice, clean place on the floor all ready for you. Whatever for? In case you feel like swooning. Oh, Randolph. Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, now, Mr. Gibbons, I think Willie sings very well. He is so awful. I've heard worse right over the radio. Oh, he's wonderful. (laughs) For Pete's sake, what was that? They're giving him the squeal, Father. Yes, and it's not anywhere near loud enough. What did you say they were giving him? The squeal. Oh, he's a swooner crooner. Oh, I'm dying. Oh, aren't you sweet? So am I. It's not nearly loud enough. He's going to be a flop unless we can build it up. Well, Gibbons, you must admit that the boy does interest the audience. Yes, so do monkeys. Huh? Oh, Randolph, I'm so discouraged. It isn't nearly loud enough. It doesn't sound like Sinatra fans at all. You must remember that Willie's not Frankie. Oh, Randolph, can't you think of some way of building up these squeals? Well, I brought my emergency kit with me. 
your what? Just you wait till I get that set of mine home. Mitzi, try the flops. The squeals are a failure. Okay, Judy, as Willie's best girl, I'll do the first flop. That'll be the signal to the others. Okay, go ahead. There. If that doesn't build up your squeals, nothing will. So what you do? You'll find out in just a second. But Randolph, I don't understand. Ah! 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 Melvin, what happened? My gosh. Gibbons has fainted. Jeepers, he didn't faint. Father, he swooned. Well, gee, how was I to know that such a big guy would be afraid of mice? Well, Foster's will be back in just a moment. In the meantime, friends, let me ask you, um, if you have the old-fashioned habit of reaching for the baking soda or some other so-called home preparation when acid indigestion strikes? Or have you been wise and discovered, along with millions of others, that the quick, modern, and pleasant way to relieve acid indigestion is with Tums? Almost as soon as taken, Tums bring relief from acid indigestion, from heartburn, from the acid pain, and the miserable, stuffed-up, full feeling. And yet, please note that we don't suggest Tums to you as a cure-all, good for a half a dozen different complaints... We say, frankly, that Tums are scientific medication compounded for one thing, one thing only, the quick relief of acid indigestion. Tums are ready to give you relief the very moment you need them. There's no fuss or bother, nothing to mix or stir. You don't even need water. Just slip one or two Tums in your mouth as you would candy mints and relieve that upset acid stomach in a jiffy. Ask your druggist tonight or first thing tomorrow morning for Tums. Only ten cents a roll or the three-roll package for a quarter. But insist upon Tums for the tummy, T-U-M-S. There are many imitations of Tums, but no substitute for them. And now, uh, let's get back to Judy. The Fosters and Mr. Gibbons have returned to the Fosters' house. Randolph, where's Mother? She's upstairs putting cold packs on Mr. Gibbons. Where's Father? About halfway to the Canadian border. (laughs) Oh, Randolph, wasn't Willie sensational? Not as sensational as my little white mice. (laughs) Randolph, the mice were absolutely unnecessary. People would have swooned anyway. Mother said there were 28 swooners. 23 for the mice and 5 for Willie. (laughs) Judy! Judy! Where are you? In the living room, Father. Father sounds slightly upset. Judy, do you realize what you've done? Not only will I lose Gibbons' order, but the Bijou Theater will probably sue me. But Willie's a great success, Father. We mustn't forget that. Squealers, squooners, white mice. I don't know what Gibbons will say when he's able to say something. Oh, there you are, Foster. Oh, Gibbons. Gibbons, yes. How how, how are you feeling? Oh, fine, fine. Just fine. Foster, you know, I've decided you're the man to can my tomatoes. Am I? I mean, I am. Yes, sir, you are. You know, I owe you a great debt. Uh, I uh, just talked to my son, Willie, on the phone, and uh, he's decided to come into my business with me. Oh. Oh, well, that, that's fine. Yeah. You mean he's going to forget all about this uh, swooner crooner business? Forget about it? Well, I should say not. He's going to be in charge of my advertising. And I've already worked out a novel idea for a radio program. You have? Oh, that's uh, great. Yes, I can see it now. The housewives all over the country will swoon all over the kitchens. And when they come to, they'll rush right out and buy Gibbons' tasty, tempting, tantalizing tomatoes. Why, Mr. Gibbons, that's a wonderful idea. You mean Willie's going to sing on your radio program? Yes, every hour on the hour. Oh, really? Well, uh, wh- wh- what's he going to sing? He's going to sing, Gibbons' tomatoes are oh so red, and in the morning they're good for the head. When huh? buying our product, you'll laugh and have fun. Just walk to your grocers and ask for Gib Oh, no! Jeepers, Randolph, now father swooned! <laughs> Date with Judy is written by Arlene Leslie and stars Louise Erickson and Dix Davis. The original music is composed and conducted by Tommy Peluso. This is Art Baker inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday at the same time to keep your date with Judy, chaperoned by Tums, quick relief from acid indigestion. Get a roll tonight, 10 cents at all drugstores. And be sure to listen to Tums' hilarious quiz program, Correction, Please, starring that quip quiz master, J.C. Flippin. It's heard every Saturday night over another network. This is the National Broadcasting Company. K.F.